So the main assignment for the week, researching credible connections, builds on the theme of the week, which is research. And I hope you've all got into the library and just at least started looking around whether you've gotten into the databases or not. And uh, I saw several people have posted articles and tried to evaluate them. And uh, so that 2.2 is the beginning of this. This um, assignment is primarily about research. And so while the nominal point is to research a particular company, don't get hung up on, you know, uh, the particulars of it, the real crux of this is finding four articles and evaluating them because that's what we're really trying to do. We're trying to make you a better researcher, a better Googler by uh, fine tuning that ro radar you have for whether or not you can trust information. We all are somewhat blind on the internet. We just type into the, um, the search input line on one end and up comes something and we somewhat trust that it, it's right, but just like uh, you go to the market and you see all that, you know, fruit piled up, uh, maybe you want to look through and find the best ones because, you know, you deserve the best. So this is about building a sense of uh, comparing different pieces of information, different sources of information, and having a sense of what you can trust, and uh, most importantly, building that little uh, pinging radar that should start to, to, to sound off in the back of your head when somebody's trying to feed you a line. So uh, if you can build that sense, then you're going to be uh, a much more savvy person on the Internet. So um, this assignment has several little bits and pieces to it. It seems complicated, but it's not. And if you just follow the orders, you know, we put in this one, two, three, four process on the instructions because if you just sort of follow that, you build all your assets and then you can put the assignment together in the end. The deliverable is a presentation. So you're going to do these different bits of, of research and, and evaluation, and then you're going to put all of that into a presentation and turn it in. But it doesn't make sense to start with the presentation. You have to go and collect all your assets. So if you really do follow this like a, a path and, and, and do one, then two, then three, then four, you'll end up with all the assets and then you can start making your presentation. It shouldn't take very long. This isn't really complicated, uh, but the thing that you, you need to remember not to skimp on is the evaluation of the articles. That's really the whole point. So if you don't do four full articles, two of them within uh, library databases and two of them from regular search engine searches, then you're not really fulfilling what we're asking you to do. But uh, the beginning process for this assignment is so we ask you to select a company that you want to research. And you really have complete freedom. You don't have to choose a huge corporation. It doesn't have to be Fortune 500. I mean, lots of people pick Pixar and Disney and Apple, but you don't have to go really big like that. And the only restriction on finding small, obscure companies, you know, we like that and, and we really appreciate if you're going to bring something new to our attention, is, uh, you know, don't try to outsmart yourself and get some company that's so new or so obscure that they won't show up in the search engines. Really, you have to find articles that you're going to evaluate. And if company is so new or cutting edge that they haven't been written about, then they're not going to appear in these databases, and that's not a useful exercise. So if you can't get hits from the, the databases that you're picking, then try to pick a slightly larger company. And... Um, with the library, there are dedicated databases. So EBSCOhost is one that we, we talk about, and it's a kind of educational database. It, it, it uh, subscribes to lots of journals and, and deep studies and, and think pieces. And if you're doing a, an academic piece, that's going to be really great. The, uh, the database we recommend for this assignment is LexisNexis because LexisNexis is oriented towards business. It's a business database. Now it's a general interest because they subscribe to 500 or 1,000 newspapers around the world and they get all the major publications. So if it's general news, it's going to be in LexisNexis. But their primary focus is on business and, they, and what makes them a valuable database is that they have things that other places don't look at. They get all the corporate reports in and the, the uh, FCEC filings and, and uh, all this financial data. And they also have a series of companies that 
profile corporations. So the first thing we want you to do when you, when you pick your company is to look them up in LexisNexis and find the company profile. The company profile is a very particular kind of thing. So uh, in, in selecting the company that you want, uh, you want to start out with the, um, the, the library database. So I'm going to go to Connect. The really, the, the proper way to get into the library is to start with Connect. And it has to do with passing along credentials. One of the things, so now I haven't been here, so I have to sign in. And uh, hopefully it remembers my login, so I don't have to type it, but we'll see. All right, it logged me in. Knows who I am. Um, and so uh, the, the reason that this process is important is that these databases are commercial databases. If you tried to just log on to Google and say, take me to LexisNexis, it would take you to LexisNexis. And to get in, they'd ask for your credit card because it's a commercial database and you have to pay for this information. Lots of major corporations do pay thousands of dollars a month for access to this. And your access is taken care of in your tuition, which means that you've got to prove that you're a student. You do this by coming in through the, the regular portal. You come into the student portal, you give your uh, credentials. There's a link directly to the library from there, so you don't have to re-log into the library. If you were to go to, directly to the library, you might have to log in at that point. Uh, and from the library, there's a link uh, down not very far that says Research Databases. And the library shows you all their different databases. You see they have a lot of specialized ones. They're in alphabetical order. So if we want to go to LexisNexis, I find it and click, and it's linking me through to LexisNexis. So because my login was already done, I don't have to re-log in. Uh, sometimes people get caught up at this phase, and if I were to come back here to the library, um, just a second, and go to this uh, research databases platform page, Come on. you'll see that they also have a direct link to go through these databases. So if you're not passing through FSO Connect, uh, this link here, which I'm going to copy and put in the uh, chat box for you, but it's always at the top of this page. So, uh, But if you click on that, then that's the equivalent of giving your login. And so the information they're looking at for this login is the same as you put in for FSO Connect. But anyway, once we've gotten to LexisNexis directly, you have a, a search interface. Now, it's not going to be as modern and, and uh, sophisticated as Google. Google has the most advanced search uh, going on in, in the planet. It practically reads your mind as you're typing. Here, you need to give it a little bit more information, go a little bit more uh, in, in terms of clarity, uh, but you will find that, that you can get whatever you want out of here. Uh, and, and some of the ways that you give it more clarity are you narrow the searches down. So instead of just simply typing the name of the company you want to put in here, you can narrow down the type of search. And there are a couple of ways that you can do that. You can specify a content field, so content type. So you, if you want just general news, you can look for that, and then you can leave off all the financial information. If you're looking for company SEC filings, you can go just directly through that or legal proceedings. Uh, if you want only company profiles you can specify that you just want to do that so that's what we're going to do here so i'm going to specify i want company profiles and somebody in chat put in the name of a company now don't give me apple or or uh, pixar or something but don't be too obscure just throw a company out there that i can look for oculus okay that sounds fine so uh i think they might have gotten bought by facebook but we'll see uh so if i search for oculus I get eventually a whole lot of hits here. And these are company profiles. Now I can narrow this down over here if I'm getting too much extraneous information, but you can see it's primarily company directories and profiles. And there are a couple of companies that LexisNexis subscribes to that do nothing but give this sort of detailed company uh, corporation information. Zoom is one of them. So right up here, very number one, is the company profile I'm looking for, Oculus Incorporated. This company, Zoom, has created this particular kind of entry which tells me all kinds of very specific data. Uh, it, it gives me financial information. It will tell me names of company officers 
and all of this kind of thing. So once you've found a company profile, the instructions, if we come back to our instructions, is that you're to make a screen capture of this. So basically having uh, succeeded in your first search that we're asking you to do, instead of bookmarking it to Digo, which there's going to be some issues between uh, firewall databases and Digo, um, because LexisNexis doesn't want their links out all over the internet, they're not really going to let Digo give you a direct link to any of this information. So they give you something called a permanent link, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. So we're not really going to ask you to use Digo too much for this art, this presentation. Uh, so to show that you found this page, we just simply want you to do a screenshot. Now there are a couple ways to do a screenshot. I'm on a Mac, so it's built in with a couple of keyboard commands. All I have to do is put in some keys and, and draw a box, and uh, it makes a uh, an image on my desktop, and uh, I can just leave it there, and I'll be able to drop this image into um, the presentation when I get to it later. Now, if you're on a PC, there are several ways to make a screenshot. Um, hang on. Let me just figure out. All right. Deja vu. Looks exactly like a screenshot. So um, if you're on a PC, uh, there, there are a couple of ways. Most of you know how to do it. Um, there's keyboard commands. There's the button that says print screen. Uh, there's a couple of macros that you can use, and there's also some uh, utilities. So anybody who is having trouble on their particular machine making a screenshot, and we also have people with Chromebooks and uh, tablets, and, and you know, so they're all different ways, and every device has their own way of making screenshots. So um, rather than trying to list that all that, just I'll say if anybody's having trouble making a screenshot, contact me, and I can easily talk you through it. But all you really want is this shot showing that you've been here and you know you're going to find that uh profiles and articles and everything run long and you're not going to be able to all get it in a single shot it doesn't matter as long as you've got the majority view of the screenshot then that's all we're looking for it's just kind of a marker to say that you've been there so once we have done our company profile the next thing to do you know uh step two is to find two articles about that company within the uh, library database. So we're using LexisNexis. So I've come back to the main search and I've just typed in Oculus. Now I could drop, drop this down and specify that I want news or that I want magazines or I want trade publications. I'm gonna do a general search now and get everything it has. And if it becomes too crowded, like I've got a lot of uh, company profile information here, so how do I get rid of stuff I don't want to see? Well, there's a, a way of stepping it down over here where I can say I only want to see newspapers. I only want to see industry trade publications or web-based publications. Now, I'm not doing too well with industry trade and web-based publications on Oculus. I only have one of each, but I have 86 newspaper articles. So if I specify I want newspaper articles, now I'm going to get news from around the world and I don't have any of this financial information. So here I can look through and I can just pick anything I want. It should be current. If you do this search and you get everything, you know, nothing comes up past 2005 or so, you might have to start babying and asking different questions. Oculus is a current company and they're currently in the news, so uh, there really isn't a problem here. Uh, if I select one of these articles, uh, this looks good. It's from theguardian.com. Uh, E3 debate and indie gaming chat from E2 London. So... Basically, this might not have been an article about Oculus, but something that mentioned Oculus, because the search that we're doing is basically a word search. So it just searched through the text of all the articles that they have, and any article that mentioned Oculus, it put it in there. Now, if you know that, uh, sometimes if you do a, um, a search for, let's say your company is Pixar, and you really want an article about uh, you know, the Monster University, but based on the word Pixar, it just didn't appear in the articles you were looking for, you can search for Monster University. If you know what you're doing or you know what you're looking for, you can put in the keywords that you want to find that will result in what you're doing. Now, if you don't know anything about the company and all you know is the company name and you can't expand beyond that, then it's a little bit of a problem. But like any good detective, you can work your way out. If you put in the company name and you find out maybe some of the titles or the products that that company produced, 
Then you can go back and you can do another search based on the product. If you find out that uh, you know Hasbro makes the uh, the frisbee, then you can go back and you can search for frisbee. And I'm sure there are plenty of articles about frisbees that don't mention Hasbro. So uh, that's how you have to kind of keep control of this database, knowing that uh, it doesn't always make the connection between the company and the product. You might need to search for certain things. But anyway, if I choose this article, or let's choose another one, um, let's try to get something that's specifically about Oculus. Review Oculus Mirrors Old School Horror. So this is an article from the San Jose Mercury News. It's written by Roger Moore. Now, why do I care about these things? Because this is how I'm evaluating the article. Uh, I've kind of skipped over that point, but you're supposed to find two articles and you're going to evaluate it according to the evaluation guide. Now, if you've already done one of the um, articles that you rated on the 10 C's in 2.2, you came up with a score. Well, that's terrific, but oftentimes you can just give something a score without thinking too hard about it. And what we really want is to hear your ideas and opinions. So for this assignment, you don't want to evaluate these with a numerical score. You want to say in English, yes, this is good, no, this is silly, or it's not good enough, etc. So we created another document called the Evaluation Guide which basically breaks all of those different components of the 10 C's into five categories, authority and credibility, currency and continuity, content and bias, citations and links, navigation and copyright. And when there's a number of questions in here, and if you, still, if you ask yourself these questions and satisfactorily answer them, that will be evaluating these categories. Now, you can specifically ask and answer these questions or you can do it in a general way. I'm gonna show a couple of examples of the way different people turn in their evaluations. But we want you to address each one of these five categories, and then we want you to make a general statement, a summary statement about your feelings on the credibility of the article. Now, what I was just asking at the beginning, uh, are the authors identified and who are they? If we can determine the author's titles and descriptions, what are their de descriptions? Where does the article come originate come, come from? So as I'm looking through the LexisNexis article, I can tell the San Jose Mercury News, San Jose is in California, Southern California. Roger Moore, uh, he works for the McClatchy Tribune News Service, so he's not necessarily a reporter for this magazine, but he's a syndicated reporter. But So I, I, I kind of guess that he's full-time employed, but he may not be necessarily uh, somebody with this, with this corporation, with this newspaper, and so forth. So uh, I want to read through this article. I want to ask myself these questions and keep all of that stuff in mind. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this assignment. Um, because it's difficult to uh, just simply bookmark something in Digo and come back to it later, it's a good idea to evaluate these articles while you're there. Now, uh, you may wanna continue that tradition of screen grabbing and just make yourself a screen grab of this article so you can read it as, you know, as a, a, an article later but when you put it in the presentation, all we really need to know is the name of the article, where it came from, and your evaluation criteria. So you don't have to reproduce the article. You don't have to even give us a link to the article. Sometimes that's helpful, but if there's not a link to be had, then you know, however you want to identify the article is fine. I really do like to know the name of the article. Uh, you know, oftentimes people will evaluate something and they won't tell me what the name of the article is. And uh, you know, that's just like, uh, looking at something without a head. So uh, make sure you just get that basic identifying information in there. Uh, one good way, if you're not collecting everything in Digo, uh, I don't know if all of you are as much of a fiend for using tabs as I am, uh, but uh, you can just do multiple searches and keep each article that you want to use open in a tab so that when you're using your browser and uh, you know whether you're using uh, Firefox or Chrome or, or Safari, any of them allows you to have multiple windows or multiple tabs. So you could just have everything open until you're done with it and then uh, you know, not worry about being able to go back and retrieve it. But if you've got that essential information, if you've got the name of the article, or um, uh, if you're in, really trying to get a link within these databases, they have something called permalinks. And you can do a permalink uh, over here with um, uh, one of these icons. 
This one says copy document link. Sometimes you can get a link back out, out of the database, out of LexisNexis, to the company's home website. So supposedly San Jose Mercury News has their own website. This article might appear there. So you, it's very possible to find the same article within LexisNexis and out on the Internet. Uh, we're not asking you to look for them, but you know, if, you're, if you're searching for a particular company, you may, not, you may run across that notion. And you may also run across the fact that things get syndicated. This article is listed with the San Jose Mercury News, but if the Tribune News Service created it, they may have sold it to 15 different newspapers and it ran possibly with different headlines in lots of different places at the same time. So we want you to evaluate this article and keep going. You're gonna get two of these, and then uh, we move on to step three. And step three is to repeat the process of step two outside the database. So now we're going to go to a general search engine. And while I assume for most of you that's going to be Google, uh, it doesn't have to be. It's anything that's a general search engine. So you can search through Yahoo. You can search through Bing. You can search through DuckDuckGo. Um, I, I don't have a list of every single search engine, but uh, you, you have your choice. Uh, and given your choice, I think 90% or more we're going to choose Google. But again, I'm not telling you to use Google. You have any search engine choice you want. But here again, I'm going to put in Oculus. And uh, the thing about the Google search is, remember, Google has these amazing algorithms, and they want to read your mind and find out, you know, what you're very most interested in. So if you put in Oculus, they're most likely going to like you to the Oculus website. And so there's going to be these general things that aren't necessarily articles for you to evaluate. And that's because the first tab is called Web. They're searching the entire web. But just like you can specify content in LexisNexis, you've got these tabs in Google Search. So if you simply go over to News, then they're going to limit themselves to newspapers, web articles, uh, magazines, periodicals, and that will all be the stuff that you want to evaluate. So if I look through here very really briefly, you know, uh, we have Chicago Eno. Uh, this Chicago-made VR app for the Oculus Rift is taking blah, blah, blah. So that looks like a pretty good article. It's about some small company that's made it. Uh, a game for the Oculus. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg talking about Oculus in USA Today. Uh, di digital trends. So I have a good exam a good range of web publications and general publications that are on the internet. GeekWire, Red and Black, VR Focus. So you're going to find a lot of cool stuff. And I'm not saying that the same cool stuff won't be in LexisNexis, but it might take a little while to search. If you'll remember, when I searched LexisNexis, I specified newspapers only. So that left GeekWire and Red and Black and VR and Focus out of my loop. So uh, you're probably going to find different things on the web than you do in, in LexisNexis. And that's part of what we want you to experience. And just kind of keep it uh, in mind of that. But uh, let's find one of these articles. I'm going to go with the GeekWire article. And... Uh, it gets laid out quite differently than LexisNexis. LexisNexis tends to strip off all the Chrome. There are no pictures. There are no big screaming headlines. There's not any ads, which is one benefit. Here I have ads, and I have links to other stuff, and I have you know, all this uh, ways to tweet and whatnot. And I have a nice big headline with, a, with uh, an article. I guess it's a picture of Zuckerberg's dog. But in the same manner, I want to go through. I want to find out who wrote it. Taylor Sulper. Now, Taylor Sulper is um, linkable here. So if I click on this link, I might want to see if I can find out his bio or who he is. So here I know who Taylor Zulper is, and I have a little thing. He, he works on the staff of GeekWire. So I'm getting some notion of his authority. So uh, I really don't know what GeekWire is. You guys may have heard of this um, publication before yourselves. But part of my evaluation it's just to simply figure out who GeekWire is. What do they normally publish? Are they one of these link bait companies that just have screaming headlines and very poor content? Or are they solid gamers who really give you uh, good articles and things like that? So I want to I dig in and find out what is their authority. And can I transfer that authority to this article? And who is this guy? And how does he connect to Geek, GeekWire? And if I can answer those questions, then I'm in the process of evaluating those articles. So uh, I want to do that. I want to find two articles that I like. And remember, to find two articles that you like, you may have to kiss a few frogs and throw them away. 
you know, so don't be afraid to find five or six articles and, and pick the two that are the best. Um, but you want to find two through LexisNexis, two through your general search engine search. You want to vet those articles completely. And then part four is a separate search. We want to come back into the library databases and we want to go to a new database called AP Images. We're going to make a presentation and we want you to have some art for your presentation. So in addition to finding articles about your company, we want you to find images about your company. So I'm going to come back to the library, back to research databases, and I'm going to go down in an alphabetical order. It's very near the top, AP Images Collection. So it links me to a link. I click here and I'm in the AP Images search database. And this is all photographs. AP stands for Associated Press. So it's a, it's a news organization that buys photographs from professional photographers all over the world and resells them to magazines and newspapers. And so they have this enormous collection of all the news of the world and all kinds of news. You're going to find sports, you're going to find games, you're going to find entertainment in here. And it's all really high quality uh, uh, images by great photographers, and everything has an enormous um, amount of metadata with it. You're going to find full caption data and everything like this. So again, the search engine isn't super sophisticated. You can limit it down to what you want to do, but let's just try a general search for Oculus. I hope I keep spelling this right. I never can remember. So uh, I got nothing. And OCC ULS. So let me try my search again. Am I spelling this wrong? Okay. Um, let me try VR. So what happens when you uh, do a search and you don't get somewhere is you should broaden that search. So in AP Images, if you can't find the company that you want, then you need to go uh, a little bit wider to find appropriate images. Uh, this only, uh, again, I was doing a word search. So I'm going to put in video game. And I should get lots of, you know, general video game articles. Um, I don't know um, if I put in video game headgear, I may get some additional hits that might be Oculus. But again, this is how you play around with the um, um, set to get what you need. Um, and, and they're generally giving me word searches here. Um, Let's try this. Somebody put in the name of a developer for Oculus. So if somebody's making an Oculus game. Ah, none of you know either. I thought I was being very... Uh... Actually, there's one, one of the teachers in our group is developing an Oculus game. He's about to release it in about six or eight weeks. Uh, but it, it wouldn't be in here because there's no press about it. Um, if I try with Oculus in conjunction with video game, do I get anywhere? All right, let's see what the... Uh, this is just the location for Street Fighter. But we have lots of articles that are related to video games. I'm not seeing Oculus headsets in here. Um, Oculus is misspelled. Well, that could be huge. And boom, we have solved the problem. All right. So if only I could spell. Lesson for all of us. So uh, we have lots of hits here. I now have 69 choices. Uh, it's uh, 
and I apologize for, for not double checking that. Someone typed it in that way and I just assumed that was correctly. So I, I, I'm not blaming the other person, I'm blaming myself. Um, so here's an image. You've got several choices. So uh, basically once you've searched on Oculus, uh, you can go through and pick what you like. Here's another very cool image. And uh, you get thumbnails here. You can select multiple ones if you want to, uh, you know, narrow them down. But um, there are a couple ways to grab these images. Uh, the best way is there's a download button. Now the reason is you could just grab this image here and drag it to your desktop, but you lose all the metadata and you lose the name of the image. And the name of the image is interesting because part of your task in this assignment is that you're going to have to credit the images. And the way that you credit the images, you could just put right AP Images Database, but every single image in the AP Images Database has a unique serial number. So if you print that unique serial number, you're telling us exactly where it came from and which image it is. So it's good to have that information. And instead of having to write it down somewhere, if I use the download button, uh, I'm going to get the high quality image rather than the, the web quality image. And you can see the high quality image here is 4,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. So it's a great, huge image. And if I hit download, it's going to download it as a JPEG image. And it is going to give the name of the image the serial number that it goes with. So instead of having to credit, you know, write down somewhere the name of the credit, within the name of the file is the serial number that you want to use to credit the image. So that's incredibly useful. And again, you get the high quality image here. Uh, you know, if I stretch it out, it looks great. Um, and so you want to have uh, five or six images in your uh, presentation. I think you want to have a minimum of four, five or six is better. And basically, it's up to you how you use them. You can put them all up in the front or you can spread them around. Uh, so citing the images, you either want to put a line credit saying AP Images Database, or you just want to put a line credit with that serial number. And that serial number is as good as crediting the image. So uh, those are the, all the elements we've gathered, one, two, three, and four, and we put them all together. And how do we put them together? We want to put them together in a... Um, presentation. So I want to show you a couple of examples presentations. Uh, this is one we just put together to as a template for everybody. So this is Pixar. You want to start off with a titles page. So you can name the assignment. You can put your own name. It's a good chance to use one of the images. Uh, and you also want to tell us why you chose the company that you chose. So again, that's a good opportunity to use the company profile screenshot that you created and then tell us what it is about the company that made you want to look for them. And it could just be simply, I've heard of this company, I didn't know anything about them, I wanted to know more about them. But I want you to give us your personal reason for why you wanting to choose the company and, and if you admire them or you, you found out stuff about them that, that made you admire them less. You just want to kind of put that information in there. Uh, you know, what is it about this company that made you choose them and what did you feel like you learned or uh, how do you feel towards this company? Most of you are going to choose companies that are creative that make products that you have a personal meaning to, so you can talk about that personal meaning. And again, here's an article. Here's the source. So someone put it in as full full sale AP image collection image number blah blah blah. That's the full banana. You don't have you know you can do that. You can do just the number. You can just say AP images connection collection. But if you don't put anything, you lose points for not citing the image, and you cannot use stuff you grabbed off the internet. You have to use stuff from the AP Images database. And so the crediting is part of, you know, verifying that you followed the process we want. So after you've talked about the company and shown me the company profile, we want you just to take me through the four articles. So uh, you're going to see a couple of ways different people do it. Here's a, a whole slide dedicated to the title of the page. Some people like to put it together tighter in a single slide. Um, we want comments on these five categories and we want a general comment. The general comment doesn't have to be this big, but it, you know, it should be your summation of what you learn. So if your individual criteria are longer, you may go a little bit less on credibility. If you give me just a few words over here on, on these categories, then 
you know, you want to go a little longer here. But um, what I don't want to see are numerical scores. I don't want you to just to say, you know, credibility or, you know, continuity 75. Uh, I want you to talk about what makes you think it, it works or doesn't work. So we want to go through each one of these articles and perform this evaluation. And the way you lay it out and how you use the pictures is up to you. So you've got a bit of freedom here. You can use any presentation format you want. doesn't have to be an online. It can be offline. But... Uh, I want to see all four articles in here, and you need to identify which ones are LexisNexis and which ones are not. Uh, so here's a couple more examples. This one's from a student. They picked Atlantic Records, so they gave us their name. They showed us the uh, company profile, talked about why they liked Atlantic Records, and you know specifically it's the artists, the Rolling Stones, Aretha Franklin, Ray Charles, Otis Redding, so forth. And here's a picture of the founder. So you know she, uh, this person's using Lexus or uh, AP images to you know uh, dig into the actual elements of, of Atlantic Records that makes them excited. Here they're doing their first article, and again, uh, all on a single page. Basically, we got the, the uh, a link. We have the different categories. We have the uh, the actual title, and then we have a statement of credibility. And uh, you know, here's another famous artist. Here's the second article. So however you want to break this down, uh, and as long as you're getting all this information in here, um, here's another example that someone turned in as a PDF. It's interesting. Uh, you know, they picked Volkswagen. So we've got a title page and a lot of great images, and uh, we've got the, uh, the company profile shot. I'm not sure this is going to scroll perfectly. But uh, this person basically screenshotted the article, so, you know, that performs the function of, Say, saying what the headline is, and then they asked all the questions and answered them. So they're going to use lots of slides, but it's okay. You know, slides are free. You can use as many as you like. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you if you use a lot of space. Um, but if you get all the information in there, you know, by by following the template of the article uh, of the evaluation guide and asking and answering every one of these questions, they pretty much fulfill what we're asking for here. But it takes a lot of space to go through that for four different articles. But, you know, certainly you work the way you want to work. And they've got lots of great pictures of Volkswagen cars and the company and all this other stuff in here. So there are a number of ways to fulfill this. Um, and I want to show you a couple that are kind of cool because once you've got the basics in there, if you want to go have a little flair, this person picked Nintendo and he turned it into an 8-bit art game. So uh, as I go through... He's got a side scroller, and we're going through levels. So we start off with Nintendo World, and uh, you know he leaps to the first level, and that's the company profile. And he goes to the next level, and that's his reason for picking Nintendo. And we go to the top, and we get articles, and we have the evaluation. So he's got everything I'm asking for here, but he's built it as a little side scroller game. And if I put it into play mode, it would play like you know 8-bit music and have flashing uh, screens and everything like that. So it's a lot of fun. And then obviously this guy's become going to be studying to become a video gamer, and he can't wait to make his first game because everything he's doing is related to this. And he's got the 8-bit art and you know uh, the game sensibility and everything like that. So uh, is it alright to choose a company we have a personal relationship with? Sure. And, and then in the reasoning, you might want to talk about that personal relationship. I work there. Uh, uh, you know, I my my dad runs the company. Whatever it is that is your personal relationship. You know, as part of your reason for choosing that company, so you can say why. Uh, here, the the last one I want to show you is somebody chose Netflix, and they did it as a Prezi. And not only did they do it as a Prezi, they did it as a Netflix page. So, uh, in the same way that you go onto Netflix to pick movies to watch, uh, if I start this, we zoom out and we have a Netflix page. But as we go through the different portions why I chose Netflix. So this person is giving their reason for choosing Netflix and they give me the company profile and they come back out and then here we, here's our first article. Netflix casts movies and, and videos into the internet age twice, LexisNexis. And so again, we have our fun facts and we have evaluation and all the different elements. So uh, within the Prezi, within a single Netflix page, they've hidden all the parts of the presentation. 
And it makes it kind of fun that you're going in and out of a network Netflix page uh, while you're studying Netflix. Now, you don't need to go this far, but I wanted to show you, you know, sort of where the bar is at if you want to try to push it and be better than every other full sale student. So uh, what I'm looking for is this. Everything there, readable and presentable. What you may want to do is, you know, take it wherever your imagination carries you. Uh, and as long as you've got all this basic information, uh, but don't get carried away with the flash and forget the four article evaluations. That is the bottom line. That's what I really want. So um, I know it seemed like a lot, but again, if you just follow it in those steps, go one, two, three, four, and then put them together. Uh, I don't think you could go wrong. You won't get ahead of yourself. Uh, make sure that you're looking at the evaluation guide and asking yourself the right questions. Uh, and and uh, I think that uh, if you do this, you will become a really good consumer of news and information, and you'll have that, that radar that will beep and, and uh, tell you whenever you might be going wrong. So uh, I saw a few questions as I was going along. Does anybody else have any questions? I'm going to turn on the mics. So if you've got noise, you might want to mute yourself, but anybody who wants to can ask a question. Uh, did that make sense? Uh, does anybody have any questions? Scott, yeah. Are, were you saying yes, it makes sense, or yes, you have a question? Okay, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. Uh, if there aren't any questions, uh, you know, uh, I'll be around all week. You can just keep asking. Uh, send me questions as you get them. And I'm going to have this presentation up on the web uh, along with um, one of the uh, global go-tos on the library in a couple of hours. So you'll be able to find it. Uh, could we do an actual web page instead of a presentation? Um, you can do any kind of presentation. So if you make a site that's on a, if you make something that's on, on a website, then you send me the link and as long as I can follow through it, I mean, technically, this is on a website. I have to go to Prezi to watch it. So uh, and I don't have a, my own personal copy of it. Uh, so any way that is um, accessible, that you want to present it, it's your choice. Um, we do ask you to do the slide presentation format rather than put it into a document. But, you know, technically, uh, if you make a document, that can be a presentation as well. The uh, Volkswagen thing is probably done not in slide software, but it looks like a slide presentation. So there's, there's some freedom in that. Uh, okay, so good luck with this. And um, I will be looking for the uh, Team A and B statements later tonight. Uh, and I'll have them or later tomorrow night. Sorry, today is Wednesday. You didn't want to freak anybody out. And tomorrow night, the, the team statements are due. And I will have them posted Friday morning for Team C. But all that seems like it's going pretty well. I've been hearing from different teams, and I think everybody's pretty on target. I think you guys are pretty sharp, and you, you get all this stuff. So, uh, you know, I don't want to beat things to death. I know you guys are smart, and you're getting this, and, and uh, uh, I just want to encourage you and say yay. So you guys have a good day, and anybody has a question, feel free to write me. See ya.